So the code that was thrown that told me it was something to do with the map center was a P0106 fault code. And uh, all I did to find this was I got this really cheap ELM 327 Bluetooth OBD2 uh, reader. And I used the free version of this app called Torque on Android. I don't know if they make it for um, Apple. But uh, that, that's the fault code that was there. And if you click on it, it says manifold absolute pressure. That's your map sensor uh, problem. So again, for $8 and change, we're just going to try replacing the map sensor. And uh, hopefully this code will go away. I know that you guys have been getting the, uh, mer the uh, engine light on lately. But see, this actually stored the code from the last time I did get it when the engine light was on. And therefore, I still want this is the problem. So let's go take that map sensor out and uh, replace it and we will uh, see what happens. This uh, might not be solved just with today. I mean, my wife's gonna have to drive the car and see if it's good enough over time where it doesn't stall when she stops coming out of a parking lot or she's at a stop light or something like that. Uh, it hasn't happened a lot, but, and also the engine runs rough sometimes. So we're gonna take that out. And hopefully that'll never happen again and we know that we fixed the problem. By the way, I will leave a link in my description below on where you can purchase this lovely uh, beauty of a Bluetooth reader. Uh, really cheap. Uh, also, the Torque app, you can just download off the Play Store. Uh, T-O-R-Q-U-E for those of you uh, who need Torque spelled. And uh, what you want to do after your repair, once you got the new thing, so scanning the stored fault codes Remember that code P0106 because that's your map sensor code. If it pops up again, you know that there's something wrong with your map sensor that you installed. But I'm going to clear all fault, fault logged. I'm going to clear the uh, log faults. And that way, we fixed it. The vehicle is stationary. We're not moving. And we're going to say, OK. And that's it. So we're at the front of the car now, hood's up, engine is right there obviously, we're right in front of it. And I want to show you where the map sensor is. Map sensor, if you're right in the front on the 2012 Hyundai Elantra, we look down here. And a good way of doing it on the diagram that they show you in the service manual is they show you this part right here. This little grid-like circle texture. And right down here, you see that little nut right here? Right there. That's where the nut is that's holding the map sensor on, which is this part that I'm touching right now. And on the bottom of that, on the little, this is a little electrical connection that sends its uh, voltage to the computer and tells what it needs to tell from the map sensor to make the car work efficiently. So we're gonna unscrew this nut. We're gonna disconnect the connector and we're gonna put the new one in. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So the new map sensor looks like this. Uh, I can't remember the part number. I'll leave that in the description. But um, you want to take a look at your map sensor before you buy one because they have a bunch of them. I bought this on eBay. And uh, there's some that have two wings for two nuts. This one only has one uh, nut bolt there. So this is the model that you want for this one. And you also want the right part number, which again, I will leave in the description. And uh, don't be afraid to compare it to like AutoZone. Put all your car details into AutoZone.com and see what they come up with for your car. But I definitely know this is the one after looking at the map sensor. And again, this was only like $8 and change on eBay. So it's a, it's a cheap fix. Uh, when I typed up online how much it would cost for the average map sensor replacement, they said in my area it costs about $200. That $200 includes the part, but when you can get the part for eight dollars and change it makes sense to just unscrew the bolt yourself disconnect the connector and then put it in yourself this is not oem i believe though so so i had to devise a way to get that nut in there this is a really really small space and uh what i found finally to at least loosen it up just a little bit now is this 10 i want to say millimeter i'm not sure if that's right but it's a size 10 uh wrench just a little wrench there uh get it lined up i can't do this with just one hand but you get it lined up get it really locked on there see what i'm doing here and then once you get locked on they just turn to the left 
and slowly but surely it will come off. So I'm gonna keep doing that until I get the nut out. And then finally, and you can fit your hand on this side, underneath if you can, I'm gonna go more from this side, but you just finish it up by hand here with your finger and take that bolt out. And that's what we're gonna get out of there. And this is what the bolt looks like. It's pretty long, uh, came right out of that hole, right here. Oops, sorry, it's just tough to get in there. And we're just gonna pull the sensor right out. Uh, the connector's still attached. Uh, I recommend disconnecting the battery before you disconnect anything electrical, just in case. Uh, yeah, so let's disconnect and connect the next by pulling the map sensor out. And uh, it's just a rubber gasket. If you looked at the replacement part, you had a green rubber gasket. So just pulling it right out should help. All right, so as you see, I got the sensor out. Uh, you want to be very careful here again because you got all these little wires and connectors. And it came right out of that little hole. So that's why I have to put the new map sensor in. But it's still connected here. And I took it out first so that way I have more leeway to get the cables out without stretching them that much. Uh, I took a screwdriver and very carefully insert it in the back here until I got the rubber gasket out. So here's our old map sensor. Uh, you can see it's quite clearly the same thing. Let's get a part number here if it has one. In the description, I'll leave the, uh, the number I ordered, but this is what it looks like. All right, and we got it off the connector. Uh, you might have seen this putty knife here. I carefully put this in between the little part of the connector right here. So that way I could pry it up because it, was no, it wasn't really moving with the, uh, the figure connector. But again, you got to be very delicate and careful so that you don't break any clips or anything. All right, so we have the map sensor out. I'm going to put the new one on. This is the new one. The connector, you'll notice it has this little part right here. That is the part that goes into that little snap thing. So it's going to go like this onto the connector first. And then we'll pop it where it belongs in the hole in the engine. So here we go. You'll hear a little snap when it's uh, connected. Just make sure that the clip is fully over that little part I showed you before. The next step is just to get it back in that hole over there, and then we'll put the screw in. So I got my hand from the front of the engine. Again, it's very, very tight in here. Uh, not a big fan of Hyundai, but uh, it, they are compact cars, and a lot of cars like this nowadays. I got it positioned right near the hole. I stick the sensor in. I'm going to push down with my thumb, and if you notice, it's going to line up with that hole, too. The last step is to get that bolt in, which I'm going to start by hand. I'm going to get my hand in there with the bolt, turn it in a couple times, and then just use my 10 millimeter wrench again to carefully and slowly uh, tighten it, and we should be all set. So as you can see, I position the bolt with my fingers. It's still out. I'm going to take my 10 millimeter wrench here carefully just do what I did reverse of what I did I'm just gonna tighten it righty tighty it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's a small space but you can do it just have some patience and uh, keep turning right and that's it job's complete nuts in connectors in tight just double check that by tugging on just slightly on the sides not the cables and uh, hopefully the ride will be smoother but that is how you replace the map sensor on a 2012 Hyundai Elantra and again this is the engine you go to the air intake here straight down to here and it's this little thing with a bolt right here and the part looks like this eight dollars and change and a fix with a little bit of patience and it can be yours as well all right hope you have a great day